Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, we are live once again for the Intel Extreme Masters Qualifiers. This is the finals and it is round three of the finals. I am Lee Demon Smith and joining me for this one once again is Matt Matrim Oaks. Matt, what an amazing two games we've had already and we're moving to round three. I don't know what this is going to bring. Okay, at this point D-Man, I have to ask, what's the cat's name? Uh, well, we have... there's three of them. There's three of them you see. It's actually Einstein's the one that's making the noise. He's the big one. And I don't know why he's sat right now about to get on my desk. So it's time to get a little <laughs> messy. Now, bearing in mind I've done, what, close to 30 hours casting, I can't complain because they've not made a noise. I've also got a dog in here, which obviously you have yourself at the back behind you. She's not really made a noise. She did have a little bark. That's about it. But she sat staring at me, wanting to go outside, I think. I don't know. There's also another cat over the side called Shana, and another one called Kurt who's sitting chilling up in the tree. And then my girlfriend sat behind me, who's, bless her, not being able to watch a single bit of TV or anything because I've just been hogging all the bandwidth and all the, uh, all the room. So I've just dominated her life, sadly, the entire weekend. So uh, I will thank you very much to them to, for helping me through this. But Matt, let's, let's talk about PUBG because we've had some pretty amazing stuff so far. Two amazing finishes. One just south of prison. The second one obviously north over the river of Rozok. Where do we go from here? Please don't say Sobsnovk. <laughs> Please, no military base. No whammies at this point. We have another airplane that's going to be cutting off. Going to be going down along the southern route. Looks like it's probably going to end around Milta. Instead, a lot of these teams, again, are going to have to do a hard push to the north. But we've been seeing a lot of times that the airplane and the first circle really aren't sinking. So these get players are due for one here sooner or later. Look Ooh. at this. It looks like nobody's opting into dropping around Gatka. It's wow, like, no, yeah. kind of tired of the trash life. We're going to go try to go for some loot, see what we can get out of this. Some squads push naturally, to be no surprise, pushing north. We can see that Ghost Gaming, who won the last round, doing a push down towards the south. They've been leaning around this quarry area and also over to from the, uh, towards Vermors. <laughs> It's, it's getting that time of day when the dog and the cats are fighting and <laughs> they're making noises. Uh, but yeah, I wonder, right, I mean, we're into the we're into serious time right now. Uh, people that haven't got a good finish so far Whoa. are thinking we need to go for it. Look at the spread and look at Milta. Milta's looking like it could be busy. There's a lot of people piling down. Uh, that is over in Georgie Pole. So there's uh, three squads there because Rob Wiz is off the side. So three squads, yeah, I can see those guys are going to go towards hospital. And uh, at the moment, you remember so often we've seen squads landing and going for the little splintered housing around mansion in prison and stuff. I don't think that's really going to work out because there's about three squads trying it. And that's where it gets really, really dangerous. We've seen a lot of early casualties come out. When everybody goes for the trash loot strategy, it means that everybody's going to be kind of bouncing into each other. So a lot of bullets are going to be going back okay. and forth, potentially some early deaths. But look at what's going on on the north. A lot of these guys do look like they're leaning into like the more trash loot strategy, quote unquote, where you just kind of get whatever you can. We're actually seeing Crater slash Prison get some early attention inside of here. Not a lot of things really up and available. And of course, with everybody going to the northeastern side, Circle's got to go down to the southwestern side. Of course, of course. Well, it's just a single Game squad is. in uh, military base. Now, something I've been noticing is obviously I, I like to keep track of where everybody's dropping. Uh, we're seeing standard setups here. So that means that uh, Corn Chuckers, once again, have got mill to power. Um, it's a good job that Rogue aren't in this game because they would have had a battle there because they go to the same place every time. Uh, Gale Force go for Milter every time. Nova, they tend to separate where they want to go. This time, I think they would go Milter and they diverted. And then I saw them getting on a bunch of vehicles at the bridge by no uh, Milter. Uh, I don't know where they've gone. I, I would assume they've gone over to mil uh, military base somewhere. Yeah, look, they've gone into Nova. Is, is that Nova in Nova? No, they've just come over the ridge. I can see, I think it's Nova in that little crossroads area. Uh, either side of the bridge at the moment posted. Well, a big part of this is we actually don't have very many squads that are actually inside of Circle right now. See, nerf me please, the rest of Nova. They are doing the push over the bridge. Looks like they might be going towards Novo. That's only mildly confusing. Nova in Novo, but there's already somebody over there, so any type of skirmish could come out from that. So, really, we see a lot of area around Gatka just entirely ignored. It seems like all the teams are like, no, I don't really want to go through the fields. I don't want to go with that strategy. Nobody in Pachinki itself right now either, just due to how we saw that everybody just kind of avoided this middle area of the map. Keeping with teams going to the same location every round, we have 
Why tempt fate at schools once again at Rozok and Apartments? That's somewhere they've been going every single round. Minty Fresh and Sonatic over here. That is uh, Hoist Flag, I believe. Um, I maybe no, I mean I'm incorrect on that. I, I've said I said that wrong in the first time, didn't I? It's not Hoist you the Flag. Really it's like uh, Ronin. Thing. Ronin Esports, isn't it? No, actually, you're correct this time. It's Hoist the Colors, Minty Hoist Fresh, the Colors. Bentic, oh, my Tyler word. GG, and Vance. I was so close. It's, like, I mean, it's, it's all merging into one right now, 14 hours in. And counting, and we've got three rounds to go, so I reckon we could clock up to 16 hours today. This could be, this could be a record. hey oh, going for that full-on power cast today. Really glad to be doing it with you. And so, oh my gosh, like, everybody's just trying to look for a vehicle. You can tell off on the far eastern side, everybody's still doing the loot. But not a lot of vehicles coming into play. We do have Minty Fresh that has managed to secure one. It looks like Envy's got one as well. But I'll, almost everybody really leaning across this edge. Specifically, whenever you see a lot of squads playing along the edge of a circle, trying to find some loot, means that they might end up opting into staying in that spot. That means that everybody's going to be pushing into these edge locations. You're going to have to drive through this firefight. Yeah, these guys went to Yaz night before, didn't they? 100 rounds. Uh, we, the, this is obviously the, was the initial fight. Still 80 alive. No initial kills yet. We may see a little conflict here. Nova have decided to come over the bridge. So deciding, okay, we're not getting a lot of love Milton Power side. Let's turn over. We're looking at Primorsk here. And uh, Ninja is going to get himself a crate. And let's see what's in. They're going to get oh. some stuff. Oh, a Groza and a level 3 military vest and a med kit. So he's going to be happy. He is all set for close range now if he wants to go after somebody. Love the grows at multiple different ranges, all around solid weapon. So he's going to be really happy with that. That could help propel him into the late game. Well, depending on how we see this early game play out, you can see not a developer. Look at this. Okay, not a developer's in one spot. And he has a whole team pushing his direction. And all the rest of his team up is up around Mansion, a little bit more north of that. Yeah, MLG Thurius there as well. So just a total split. Three different squads all heading his way. There's Sonatic and Minty Fesh. Uh, they're going to go into shelter, I guess. Looks like they will. Yeah, that's where Sonatic, it seems like he's going to me. Their entrance is just up that way. Are they going to bother or have they already been in? You can actually, it doesn't actually look like they're going that way. A lot of competitive players do not like bunkers slash shelter. They think it's a little bit too dangerous. Too many times you'll see somebody camp on the outside of it. So it regularly gets entirely ignored inside of competitive play. Yeah, I haven't seen too many going that way. I think I've only seen it used a couple of rounds, so it doesn't surprise me either. Um, looking around the map, uh, Lush's team up in North Georgie. There is uh, a couple of shots in Rosak, I think, taking shots there. Slaughter looks like he's up on the hill with Dragoon, so maybe just taking peeks towards uh, what's going on at school. There is a squad about to come blasting through. Let's have a look towards Ghost. Where are they based? McCoy, is that McCoy down there? I can see, yes, it is down yeah. towards um, uh, Primor Square, aren't they? They're down near Quarry. Oh, I can see Profi and Quarry. There, there we go. Coming back over here next to Rajak, you can see that right on the edge of the circle, so everybody's just trying to get their last little bit of loot. 17 off in the distance. I think that he's still over at school. I had to take a wild uh. guess on that, I, I believe. Yeah, he's still over at school, so you can see that the way just getting a little bit of visibility through the mountain. Ashik and the rest of his team still doing some looting. Ashik actually separated really far out. This might be them trying to acquire a couple more vehicles. Is it looks like Seventeen has one, but nobody else. Yeah, and they, you know, they love to have their four vehicles, don't they? You know, one is not enough. Everybody has to have a fair share. Ideally, I, someone will have a two-story vehicle, uh, bike as well. There's a lot of debate going on about that right now. Whether or not it's better to take <laughs> four different vehicles and have a much higher chance of all, like all of your players making it through, or at least most of your players making it through. So that way, if somebody gets shot down, then it's only one person that gets shot out or is it better to actually run like three vehicles and have one vehicle that has two people in it so at least you can return fire with everybody opting into this like four vehicles naturally the one guy that can actually return fire on somebody could net a lot of free kills off of that yeah and we, we do see a lot of people going down in the rotations because i mean the danger is if you get knocked that's it you're out because you know the team is not going to come back around and get you off generally um, unless it's uh, a spectacular situation that coco that's what I was talking about, that too much. Honestly, there's not, nothing more vehicles. satisfying in this game than driving that motorbike. It is so nice. Oh, but they need to make a, like, a little racing game just itself out of that motorbike. That's it. PUBG Racing. I'd be down to play it. A lot of fun. Actually, I just love going through and just trying to hit like flips and stuff like that. I know that everybody likes to joke around about it, but if you actually didn't know, one of the big things to do is try to land on the front wheels. For some reason, physics for front wheels just tends to be a little bit stronger. It doesn't make you flip. Everybody always wants to lean onto the back wheel because that's the way the physics in your brain makes you think. 
front wheel seems to be the strong wheel to land onto. So we see all of these vehicles circling around, trying to figure out how they're wanting to play around this centralized location. We talked about the importance of center locations really earlier in it, but if you missed that, it's just a mathematical thing. So if you're in the center, there's less of a chance that you're going to have to move. So, uh, and if you do have to move, you really don't have to move that far. So that's why a lot of these teams are really opting into it. Ooh, and Twist and Alex in a little bit of a spot right now. As you can see, Tony, 100 rounds, all surrounding on them, but not really doing a push. Are they aware that they're there? I'm not sure, you know. I mean, they've got to be looking at this and thinking it's already been looted. I don't think they've crawled in on a wares. Oh, Mini Fridge Jr. getting knocked. Uh, and that is going to be a member of Ronin, which is really, really important because they've doing, been doing pretty well in standing so far. Yeah, they got, they got themselves first place in the first round. Uh, but to be the first man down, I didn't see exactly who was first blood because there is two down now. I didn't actually notice that in the kill feed while we're looking at the uh, pretty rotations that have been going on. Tony steps around that corner and just instantly gets taken down. Soldier Alex securing the kill onto that, so he's going to try to crawl back to safety. You can see 100 rounds coming back over, trying to get the res back up for him, provide some level of protection. They have no idea how many people are posted up around them, I don't believe. So that's why they're leaning into a much more passive position. They're assuming that there might be four people inside of this building. Well, it is just the two. Dak Coco had just joined them. We saw him coming across on the motorbike, actually, a moment ago. So they, they have just come in here. Sanatic, he's watching, it looks like, um, who is that going past? That is, why can I not think of their name? It is the, the, the blah, 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 blah. I've, I've got to that point at the night where names are escaping me. All the names. It doesn't matter. I was actually not going to lie. I was looking away, checking out something that was happening on a different corner of the map, so I didn't catch which squad it was that was happening. It was Corn Shuckers. I, 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 just, I just completely went blank. I was like, Corn, Corn, Corn. Speaking corn. of Corn Shuckers, <laughs> Zampa's getting a knockdown onto Nova. It's Swisher. And a kill onto it as well. That's going to be another squad that was performing pretty well earlier today, taking an early casualty. I don't know. I don't think that we actually saw a death coming out from whenever we saw the Ronin down, did we? I think we just saw a knockout, so they might have been able to get the res back up on that. Well, Swish is dead. Well, Swisher is dead, but I think Mini Fridge Jr. that we saw got knocked down earlier, he might still be up and alive. I Indeed. don't think that I ever saw him bleed out and get killed. They've got themselves... Okay, so Corn Shuckers are going for this same strategy that worked very well for them in the first round, where they got a lot of kills. Uh, and that is not to go into on Complex, as Nova do get stormed. We're not seeing it. Ruckus is in there. There we go. We can see mad camera work. No! Someone's pressed the wrong key! Someone's pressed the wrong key. We back away. And it's all over. <laughs> There's a, just a lot, litter of bodies on the hillside. That is how quick things can happen in pro-level PUBG. It's just near on instantaneous sometimes. Specifically if you're just driving along and three different people can turn and look at you. These guys just made an approach right over that hillside, walked into a kill box, and just instantly got taken down. We're going to see the res come back over there. Come back over into this fight, you can see that everybody's still playing it kind of passive, agreeing to be in their own little different positions. A couple of bullets going back and forth, but again... Not a lot of information for either squad to work with. And to be honest, the building that Twist and Alex are in, it's got a lot of really odd angles inside of it. So you see a lot of players tend to not push into it because, you know, you have that weird stairwell that you have to go up into. You have all of those weird side rooms that are in the first and second floors. So, so many places to really hide in if you're the defenders inside of one of those buildings. Yeah, not a good one to storm at all. Okay, looking at uh, people in the chopsticks. It is uh, WTF. They got themselves in there. Okay. Hippox having fun with Bahawaka there. And just, just chilling, just driving around in circles. Okay. Anything to entertain yourself for a little while? It's been a long it's day after all. Game. You know, it's a little <laughs> bit slow. These guys have been playing for several hours at this point. You gotta do what you can to make yourself happy. And we all talked about it a second ago. Driving the motorcycle is just kind of fun. So, off in the distance, you can see Undercover Pi and Riem look like they might be making an approach off in this direction. They could be hearing this firefight and might want to choose to partake inside of it. So, these squads right now have been kind of looking for a few extra points and it's always nice to jump in on top of this now speaking of looking for a few extra points Corbu is just absolutely throwing everything he can at squad it's going to be corn shuckers it's going to be passing off the side of the hill but not going to scare too much damage onto him yeah interesting you say that because gale force they do need to get themselves a decent finish they need to start getting some some uh kills on the board so they definitely want to get involved in that one i'm seeing profi so ghost uh are actually engaging on corn shuckers there unless it was someone going in between them but i'm pretty sure they were firing at each other there tyler gg had passing on by looks like air force i'm just gonna back away from that complex and hold in the end at the top there undercover pie gets himself the vehicle explosion that's vamped and tyler going down talking about them needing some points and 
always nice to net a couple of vehicle explosions while people are driving by you. Naturally, if we heard the gunshots from that, everybody that's posted up inside of those buildings did as well. See, Ream is still making a progression over towards that other spot. Zampa's doing a drive-by and nets two knockdowns off of that. Nice shots coming through as you see the UAZ just rolling up the hill. Yeah, is going to get finished off. Hitez in there as well. And there's the rest of his team moving through. Everybody wanted to secure the kills. And it's Paradox with the Tommy Gun that managed to get them both. So two more kills for Corn Chokers. Corn Chokers, they're looking pretty consistent so far throughout these last three rounds. Still coming back off to our stalemate. Everybody's just kind of looking at each other. I think that they've even opted into not taking any more shots. They're just kind of looking back and forth. So you can see back over towards the center, well, I guess the northern center of the map, you can see Corvu still trying oh. to put out some bullets on anybody that comes near him. I have lost feed. I don't know about you. Still, I'm still uh, got in on Corvu right now, so. Okay, I'm back. back I think Corvu, yeah. There you go. Whew. So. Panic, panic for a moment there. Panic for a moment. I don't want to lose feed, not in the finals. So, Mini Fridge Jr. and Duck, these are the guys, obviously, that. Finished very well early on. It is Ronin Esports, and they got themselves the first place finish in the first round. And they've got themselves a nice set of UAZs in a fairly safe position. And back over here, and we can see Undercover Pie. It seems like every single time it comes back over to me, we pop back over here, and we're getting a look at what we have going on with 100 rounds and Alex and how they're hanging outside these buildings. We've got Wolf off in the distance. Again, I don't think that they're going to push forward. I thought that that might be their original strategy, but they have all of their vehicles really posted up. They've kind of made their own base off to the side and is looking for anybody that's going to push in and try to aggress into their area. Now we're coming back over here with Nova. Remember, we saw them just a second ago net a lot of kills, and it looks like not a developer, Duck and Kraken, might be thinking about pushing over there. So that's going to be Ronin pushing maybe towards Nova. But I don't know. That's, that's kind of a weird push for them to take. They have their vehicles next to them. If anything, they might try to just hop into those and reposition. Yeah, I was going to say... You usually don't see a lot of teams opting into pushing down that hillside. Yeah, I noticed, uh, obviously we saw Ben Q going down. I didn't see where exactly. Um, he died outside the play zone. But the rest of his team, Gale Force, are well inside the play zone. So he must have been in a separate area from them. I don't really know where it was. We do have a couple of teams that are making the move. Um, Minty Fresh and Synatic, I think they're underneath the bridge. I don't think they're on it. I think that's what we're looking at here as Ferg tries to make its way over the bridge. And the circle, it's getting a lot smaller. There's a large portion of scary amounts of water in there. I'm hoping it's going to end up a quarry because quarry can be so entertaining. Looks like we're having still a lot more skirmishes happening over there. Alex finally getting a knockdown on the Dat Coco. Remember, that was our 2v4 fight that we were looking at beforehand. And yes, it looks like we have yeah, two different people posted up different spots, kind of floating underneath of the bridge. They do have a boat next to them, so interesting to see how that plays out. Dat Coco is just going to get rezzed up. This is all about that resource burn right now. I'm still surprised that this has been going on for so long. Usually one of the squads just opts into going, I don't want to be a part of this anymore, and just pulls out. But it seems like both are fairly comfortable in this position. It's starting, isn't it? There's, there's people in the water. It's starting. You knew it would. As soon as that amount are in there, it's... it's uh, is he going to try and run them over? Come on, Shepard. Go on, Shepard. Do it. I you think it's Ferg actually right now, driving. Shepard. Try oh, to find somebody. Go past them. I uh, know. So he's just going to continue on. Nice little lean back and forth with the boat. The boats can be very, very dangerous due to how it's open topped and naturally you're just in the middle of a field whenever you're on the water. It's same premise. So a lot of shots can come out. A lot of people just hanging out in boats and swimming right now. So we're going to have to see how this next circle, once it updates, forces everybody to reposition. A lot of fights kind of happening along this beach line as you can see Fight XD that's holding down the ferry pier getting shot from multiple directions. So I just saw White Temple Fate have got themselves positioned, um, I think it's in the quarry. So they're looking towards a quarry finish. They've got themselves the, the ridge lines of it set out. So, oh, hello. Ferry Pier is going to get dropped on. So they're not going to hang around in the water. They are going to push up. So that's Pride and Kai in there. Um, we'll see. I, I mean, there, there's a lot of buildings in between. So whether they're actually going to continue pushing. There's the next circle. Yes. Yes. It's going towards Quarry. It's away from the bloody water. And that's what we all want to see right now. Now, all these squads that were posted up, remember our stalemate that we were looking at over towards the eastern side. That's going to force everybody to start repositioning out. Undercover Pi and his team, they're going to have to come out of this as well. Flight XD instantly jumps into a UAZ. He's just not about being in the ferry, uh, ferry, uh, the pier anymore. He's going to just cut out, so he's going to start making his push through. You can see Shepard actually getting it down on Decay as he was going for a reposition there. Cool Breeze, the man that gets the kill. Rotations, oh my word, they're happening everywhere. Everybody's pushing in. 
MLGB coming in. Uh, everybody's heading towards the quarry. You can see corn chuckers have moved away in there as well. I'm looking towards what's going on on the edge there. Tony's getting tagged up. It looks like ghosts are moving in as well. It's it's going that wild. The camera's shaking. It's just going to throw the map out the window. Let's look at what's going on. We can see Kraken. He's going to look to take shots. But it doesn't look like he's going to land anything. Nova off the side. And, well, he needs to get moving. The rest of his team... I mean, they're in the circle, but everybody else is positioning, and these guys are just sat still. Sometimes that can be some form of merit, but they have to move at some point here relatively soon. Otherwise, everything's going to be taken. 65 people still alive. And remember, there is this giant hill that's around Quarry, so that's going to eat up a lot of space. Looks like Undercover Pie and the rest of his team are opting into just moving from one hilltop to another hilltop, this time trying to go for a little bit more centered spot. So Ninja moving up. Remember, Illigit got that um, Groza. So they were in Primorsk, weren't they, earlier on there, that gift given to them. Uh, Quarry slowly getting occupied. People are trying to edge the bets on where exactly this is going to go next. Oh, Ferg, he's going to lit up. I think that was uh, Corn Shookers that were taking shots on him there. And it's going to be Giraffe that... Well, giraffe knocked from falling? Oh, man, it's still happening. People falling out of the vehicles. And Formulas finishes him off. Well, more often than not, when that happens, you have a lot of bullets coming your way. You think you hit the brakes enough to where you can jump out and try to use the car for cover. And either the car is still going and it kind of boots you off to the side so you take damage from falling. Or it just runs you over yourself. So, it, it, more often than not, it's just, I'm trying to survive, I have no life left. And that's what ends up happening. Either that or motorcycles. Let's just be honest. Three-seater motorcycles, they're death traps. Oh my word, look at that map. There's shots going on all around. Quarry at the moment. There's one squad that's being pinned... Uh, especially, and that was Ninjo and his team over there, just in the tree line. You can see X-Formula trying to line up the shot. And he managed to land one, two hits. Not quite enough to down him, though. And it's going to be Vamp Gaze who will get away. It's a really nice hold that we're seeing coming out from the... It's going to be the outskirts of the quarry. Our quarry. So the Zek is posted up on the other side of this. So a big thing to note is that you can actually take vehicles and push them up the side of the quarry, all depending on how you choose to, like make your push. It looks like a lot of the uh, teams are choosing to go by foot, or maybe they're just being forced to, as Nino uh, is taking out a lot of damage. Nino's down. Looks like Ferg, the man that landed the shots as he pushes up there. Illegit though with the grows up. He's going to be just ahead of him, and that's where we're going to try and span up to. Got that red dot in it, going to get the reload. He can do a lot of damage up close round. Ferg just behind the tree, going to pop out. Going to be easy shots in the back there from that grows up. Illegit gets one down, pushing up. Going to try and get the rest. It's, uh, Zrox, Zrox, I don't know his name, I can't get it right, he's going to get tagged up heavily and he, he's down as well, cool, Breeze the last man standing for his squad right now, a quick first aid for Illegit, I don't think he's going to be able to get the rest of his team up, Shepard is there, cool, Breeze is a long way back, and cool, Breeze is gone, it's just going to be the rest of his team, he's the last man standing, Illegit, he's not giving up on this, he's, Illegit's just going, he's going ham, he's going high, he's going low, he's going to jump in and around, he's got a car 98 facing him, and that should be easy with the gross, but no, switch weapon, Ninja in the end will come up and finish him off. So Ninja's going to be able to get the res onto that, while that whole skirmish was happening, there was another squad that actually pushed up back behind it, so that's what happened to the rest of the teammates for this squad, see off in the distance on the minimap, they're right on top of those skull and crossbones, as that's going to be the teammates for Ninja. They've gone down over there. And look at this. Everybody's going to have to move away from Quarry. It's going to be straight up on top of this hill. And just to make it a little bit better, let's go have a crate drop right in the middle of it that everybody's going to kind of want to go to, but nobody can't. Well, actually, I don't know. That's going to fall right in between <clears throat> these two different hillsides. Corn so Look at Corn Chuckers. They've got a complex, but they've got a squad coming straight into him. It's Tamale. Tamale, I think, is getting lit up as well. I can see he's taking a lot of damage. It's off to the right. Go to the right, camera. Go to the right. MLG at the end. Down as well, Zentrix in there, but it's Cornchuck as you can see, Elusive. They have a team coming in on them. Tunican just got down by Nerf Me Please. That's Nova against MLGB going on the kill feed there, but we could, just saw the squad coming in. There is uh, Thurious from MLGB. Biggie off in the distance. That Coco should get Zentrix back up here. Just playing slow and casual, trying to push back up to here. It looks like he took enough damage to lose his helmet already. Either that or maybe he just didn't find one. I think that we saw MLGB <laughs> have a spot to where they should have enough geared from where they were looting at but again 54 people still up and alive so many people are going to be pushing into this and remember this is a very 
interesting spot that we're going to be at. A lot of divots, a lot of different places you can play around. So that's how come you see all these lines going shots every single direction. Because people can still kind of play around it, specifically if they have the vehicles, like what we're coming in with Wolf right now. You can really set up some nice fortifications around this area. we got a little triangle set up here. We've got Ghost on the east, just north of them, on the point of the tip of the triangle, I think it was Gale Force. And then the lower left side, directly east of Ghost, is um, Corn Chokers. So they're all in a very close proximity. Now we're seeing Zentrix hitting um, MLG Furious. We saw that earlier on. Undercover Pie from Gale Force. He's taken down uh, not a developer. So those guys are getting pushed. That is going to be the original Ronin Esports guys that are getting knocked down there. We see an Undercover Pie here. Getting that reload. Wolf just with him for Gale Force. And a lot of the squads still have yet to make it inside the circle. You're seeing all of these fights that are happening. Everybody's just trying to edge in. Minty Fresh just runs straight up on top of Baja Waka. That's a fight that's breaking out off on the southern side. But we're coming back over here with Wolf. And this long standoff, you can see Duck off in the distance with Minty Fresh Jr. Whoever kind of secures this area can get a lot of control on the tops of the hills. Remember, this is for a place in Oakland. The Intel Extreme Masters qualifiers. If you want to get tickets, you can get them today. Get over there, im.gg slash Oakland2017. Because four of these teams will be taking part there, along with the eight invites. The top teams from Europe and America will be taking part. Tamai pushes in. Doesn't manage to get the shots through there. He's going to try and charge the building, but it doesn't manage to run out the other end. He's managed to force him out, at least, I guess. This is uh, Ghost they're pushing on, isn't it? Oh, no, tell light. It's not. It's Corn Shuckers. Corn Checkers with a very nice setup here. You can see that Elusive had a cover fire position for his teammate to retreat back through. So if anybody pushed out after him, he was Did just waiting to out? net anybody. I just thought he just threw a nade. I'm pretty sure it came back off the bars, the window bars, which is why they ran away. Pride just took a massive hit from it. Hey, we talked about it beforehand. Those bars can be hard to work around, specifically with thrown items. You have to be really, really Another careful. Another nade. How's, wow. he, how's he alive? I mean, he's just survived two nades now. Just on like nothing. He's just literally used the first aid, gets straight back up, and then straight down again. Envy just took down Zek. Uh, so that is one of the corn chokers that is shooting it elsewhere. Elusive's been down. Elusive's been down. Paradox and uh, Zampa immediately turning around, heading that way. And probably just getting a little bit more grenade damage coming out there. Not getting down in any of them, but taking a significant amount of damage. So that's going to burn off a lot of meds. They're right on the edge of the circle. So all, both of these squads are going to have to start pushing forward. You can see that we still have a lot of people fighting up in the northeastern section of this. And still, Grenade Salvo happening down around Pride. Seems like he's a magnet for him right now. Yeah, Undercover Pi just getting another one down there as well. Bahawaka taking down Minty Fresh. Uh, Zampa, we're seeing him here. We're seeing him fight these guys. He's just picked off someone else as well. Bahawaka taking shots there. That's Formula. Now up at the top, Ashex just on the side. He's going to peek around this vehicle. Should find himself. He's going to have to go for the push, I think. Because he, either he's going to get pushed up on. He needs to start making the move, Ashek. We saw him get that four-man kill, but we didn't see it. But we saw it on the kill feed, at least. As Ashek's down by Butcher Bill. Now, Bahawaka. Now, White and Fade have been bouncing around. Not getting the greatest finishes. That grenade actually might bounce down and kill Ashek. No, it's just bounce wide. And I think he's oh. the last man standing for his team. Getting the kill and running off the motorcycle. The circle is now pushing in. You gotta pick up your friend first, so good job for him coming out there. But that's gonna leave Bahawaka in a bad spot. So he's kind of <laughs> stuck out here outside the circle, just watching his motorcycle drive off without him. Gale Force are picking up a lot of kills here, oh, I've noticed. I keep seeing him on the kill feed. Right in front of Corn Shuckers. Oh, well, Envy just got himself three happy kills there. That was easy for him, wasn't it? There we go, 26 people alive. Everybody's still pushing out and around. Rayon, you can see, just jumping through, trying to make it over next to this tree. Undercover Pi, Wolf still holding a high ground spot over here. Tamai finally manages to get out and away from where he was at beforehand, instantly turning back over here. And everybody oh, Baha pushing. Waka does that a circle. Yeah, everybody seems to be pushing straight in. A Gale Force pick up another kill. Undercover Pi, I've seen him pick up a lot of kills here. He must be pretty high on the kill feed uh, overall. But look at this. It's Ghost that are in the circle. Mikoi once again. Perfect positioning for these guys. It could fall their fight away once again. They won the last round. They might get a second. It's a very nice, solid structure that we see coming out from UAZs. Look at that. That's just almost a perfect half circle coming out. That takes some effort to make sure that you practice this enough to get this pulled off. But 42 seconds, and all of these guys are still playing along the edge. You can see a lot of bullets still coming out. Duck Minifridge Jr., rest of Ronan, trying to figure out how they're going to push through. And we do see Nova taking a lot of damage. 
A lot of damage indeed. It's uh, Jay all day and Nerf Me Please both down. Lock Nav off the side. It's Dat Coco with a angle on them as well. Tommy has just knocked Envy. Cornchuckers have just lost the man, and that's right on the edge of the blue. These are the two guys, Pride and Tumai, that pushed into that building a long time ago, and they're still causing Cornchuckers real problems. Wolf from Gale Force making the move as they go over. Undercover Pie with him, switching over. Now, Mini Fridge Jr. from Ronin just off in the distance. Tumai is actually coming up. They're coming up behind Gale Force Esports. Dat Coco as well. And everybody is just doing the last minute push. The circle is now forcing everybody in. So you see everybody's just running down this hillside right into where Ghost is positioned at. But are they actually going to be able to push back up behind this building? Yes, it looks like Undercover Pie. They're just going to come in and they're going to breach this. And are they just going to hard push up these stairs? Undercover Pie has already taken a little bit of damage off of this. See, Fred Gia is up on the top there. Wolf's still leaning on the bottom. So we have a squad in this building right now that's on the second floor and another one that's on the first floor. You can see everybody's just looking around trying to see who's pushing out from different angles. I think uh, Nova just got wiped out. You can see Tumai and Duck, they went in the play zone. Obviously, the play zone was coming in pretty hard. So, Gale Force on the ground floor. Uh, looks like Ronin outside. They're the only people that are outside. It's Minifish Jr. and Kraken that are out there. Uh, J5 and Freddy G. Apologies, I don't know the squad they're from at the moment. I'm just going to have a peek for that in a second. But uh, also, Ghost. Ghost have the four men alive, don't they? They are the only full squad. I tell a lie. Profi's down at the moment. Ryum from Gale Force in there. It's an awkward complex as well. It's not the clean view they had before. Wolf should land that shot. No. Doesn't get it on Mini Fridge Jr. We go 47 seconds. We've got 10 people alive right now. Or 11 people that are alive right now. So everybody's going to have to come into where these complexes are at. Mini Fridge Jr. has got his work cut out for him. And you can see everybody's got an angle on somebody else right now. That's why it's really hard to get any downs or kills off of this. Everybody's looking different directions. So the moment you step out, bullets just come whizzing your way from the other way. Four members of Ghost still looking good, just about inside the zone. They won the last round. A win here may well secure them the points they need. They haven't had a high amount of kills from what I've seen. I've been trying to look at the kill feed as, as it goes and keep my eye on exactly what squads are getting what. So well, that hasn't worked out for them so well. Uh, it's NTHSV, by the way, in the upper floor of the apartment with Gale Force Blow. Uh, Real though, could really play spoiler here if they make the move. Well, specifically, he has Mini Fridge Jr. and Kraken coming up back behind him. Everybody's now being forced towards the center spot. And we see this happen from Ghost a lot. They don't really prefer going for the kills. They'll take them if they can, but they are all about positioning. And you can see how much that benefits them in these later circles. Now, as long as they can make sure to hold these angles, but they're getting so many people that are starting to push up right next to them. You can see Mini Fridge Jr. has managed to make himself inside the circle. All 11 people still alive, but wow, Kraken is real low. Mini Fridge Jr. just hugging, hugging that SUV. Uh, trying to see if he can get it. It's the caravan, actually. He's right next to. Something's and the next... cooking near him. I don't know where it is. <laughs> the next circle has popped up, and I don't believe that anybody is actually inside of it. Looks like it's going to be right around these tree areas that are in front of us. So everybody's going to have to push down and out. And look, again, everybody's just holding different angles. Like, okay, this guy has to go up from here, and this guy has to go up from here. Kraken so low right now. It's four squads, isn't it? It's the top four now. Kraken, yeah. Obviously, you got no meds. J5 holding the angle with the shotgun. He knows there's two people below them, but they've no interest in pushing up either. So the four squads. The awkward part, really, is Gale Force are split. Now, that could work in favor of them or against them. It really down to Rion. I think the battle is happening. J5 is getting pushed up. They're going to try and come up the stairs. Undercover Pi are oh, fighting on the stairs. It's so tricky. You can have that awkward moment where the animation just pulls the gun away from you. They have to drop. The blue is moving in. Everybody's got, got, got to get moving here. Austin knocks Undercover Pi down. Wolf Posse is around. He's going to get shot in the back by Freddy G. That's just done Ghost a world of favors. Rion, the last man standing for Gale Force. Mini Fridge Jr. comes around the corner. And this is looking all too easy for Ghost, isn't it? Everybody has killed each other. Mini Fridge Jr. and Rion fight. Mini Fridge is the last one standing. And that is a easy, easy win in the end for Ghost there. It is, well, 10 kills for them. Not bad overall. Undercover Pie, it looked like he was doing so well, but they only actually got eight kills as a squad overall there, Gale Force Esports. They could have done with more points than that. They do get themselves a third place finish, but Ghost with another first place and tell kills. That is looking very good for them now as uh, almost booking their ticket to Oakland.
We also do have to talk about Mini Fridge Jr. and his team. They've been doing a very good job. That's Ronan. So they're coming in second. They're also securing not the most kills, but six is definitely nothing to sneeze at. So with this, we can see Nova is off on the side, actually netting a lot of kills, but coming in sixth place. We have a lot of these really high kill teams that are getting the sixth through ninth spot. So getting these kill points that are keeping them really, really competitive, trying to figure out who's going to be able to go to or it's Oakland. Yeah, I'm looking at Corn Shookers. Corn Shookers had decent points, of course. They had nine kills once again. Seems to be they're averaging nine to ten kills almost every round. So that's definitely keeping them up there. They've had pretty good finishes. But like you say, yeah, Ronan, Ronan Esports, we should definitely call about that. I mean, they won the first round, get a second place here. It's looking very good for them, and it's going to start getting worrisome. Obviously, we're at round three now. There's only two more rounds to go. Some of those big name teams that are obviously got a lot of pressure on them, maybe uh, White Temp Fate guys looking at this. Um, I'm thinking, uh, obviously the Nova guys, Nova guys were so consistent in the qualifying uh, round two, but just haven't really worked out for them. They did got sixth place here, they got themselves uh, six kills, uh, seven kills overall I believe. Uh, eight kills, I can't count, there we go. Eight kills overall, um, so not too bad. It is going to be very close in the points, so I'm going to have to try and top them up after this round and see exactly where we stand. Guys, we'll be back in just a few moments. Next round, round four coming up. Thank you very much for watching, we'll be back in around about 10 to 15 minutes.